Now, MPs are going to be debating the legal definition of sex this afternoon. It's because two petitions from either side of the debate received more than 100,000 signatures. And because of that, there will be this debate in Westminster Hall later today. Now, here's one of the uh, petitions. It says, update the Equality Act to make clear the characteristic sex is biological sex. And you can see here it's uh, got 109, uh, 463 to be precise, signatures. Um, this petition asks the government to change the Equality Act to make it clear that in UK law, sex means biological sex and not sex as modified by a gender recognition certificate. Now, then there is the other petition. It has a, a different view. Uh, commit, it says, to not amending the Equality Act's definition of sex, and it has nearly 139,000 uh, signatures. This petition said that the change to the Equality Act proposed in the first petition would remove legal protections for trans people, an already marginalised group. Let's welcome our two guests to discuss this. Maya Forstatter, who set up that first petition you heard. She's the director of Sex Matters, which campaigns on this issues. And by Robin Moira White, a barrister, an author who's written a book about transgender law. Welcome to both of you. Uh, Maya, why did you set up this petition calling for the legal definition of sex to be changed? To make the Equality Act clear so that it protects everyone's rights, there are already protections in the Equality Act for transgender people. It's called gender reassignment. And there are protections against sex discrimination for both men and women, which come originally from the Sex Discrimination Act. And when the Equality Act added gender reassignment, it didn't mean to destroy women's rights. Those two characteristics, just like others, age, disability and so on, are different characteristics. And so what we're asking the government to do is just to make clear that sex in the Equality Act means sex and that if you have a gender recognition certificate, mm -hmm. which, is, which is a certificate that lets people, for example, get married in a, a different legal sex or to collect a pension, that doesn't change their sex for the purposes of sex discrimination protection. Robin, why did you sign the second petition which said the law shouldn't be changed? Well, sex under the Equality Act is, is more complex than biological sex. And if we accommodate trans people in our society, if someone becomes a trans man, they, they transition from female to male, then they want to live their life as male. And the law needs to treat them in their acquired gender for them effectively to live in society. And the proposed change would effectively banish trans people from the, their normal place in society. Right. Well, Maya, what do you say to that? If that's the practical consequence, as Robin sees it, of the change that you are proposing... It, it, that's nonsense. The law, the Equality Act doesn't tell men and women how to live. If somebody wants to change their name, change their pronouns, uh, change their style of dress, their hairstyle, uh, call themselves what they like, some people take hormones, some very, very few people have surgery, but that is a very small minority. Most trans people don't. Uh, there's nothing in the Equality Act that says that to be a man, you have to be manly and to be a woman, you have to be womanly. It just says that employers and service providers shouldn't treat people unfairly because they're a man or a woman. And then it says there are very specific situations where you are allowed to have basically a policy or a sign on the door that says female only. And those are situations such as where women are getting undressed, where they're vulnerable, where they're sleeping. So dormitories, changing rooms, showers, communal showers, uh, you know, communal changing rooms in the gym, mental health wards, hospital wards, women's refuges. And all of those places are places where women should be able to expect that where it says female only, it means female only. And that doesn't mean that service providers shouldn't also uh, accommodate trans people, but they can't accommodate trans people while giving women assurance that a space is going to be single sex All and right. mean single sex. Uh, Robin, what do you say in response? It, it, it doesn't work. I mean, I'm somatically female. I transitioned 10, 12 years ago. Um, but, but the effect on non-trans people would be devastating. So the idea would be that trans men, who can look very male, would be expected to use female facilities, female changing rooms. And so no, you would be forcing trans, trans people into the inappropriate facilities, uh, which would cause great difficulty for non-trans people, let alone the trans people who are being made to use facilities which are just not appropriate for them. Maya? 
Not at all. The Equality Act doesn't force anyone to use any particular facilities. It just makes it lawful for service providers to exclude them. And the obvious thing to do, and, and most large places, you know, large venues, pubs, airports, universities and so on, already think about transgender people and non-binary people, and they have unisex options. So this is not about forcing somebody into a place they don't want to be. It's about being clear about the places they're allowed to be and where they're not. And Robin says that Robin is somatically female. To me, I see Robin as a man. Many people see Robin as a man and be just as uncomfortable undressing in a space with Robin as any other man. And that's not to say that Robin's feelings of identity are not real. They just don't have a place in a space where women and girls are getting undressed. Robin? If we're going to accommodate trans people in society, then we have to accept that what the trans refers to is transition to, to an altered state and not, uh, uh, not sending them off to some third space ghetto, which is not part of transitioning in society and being accepted as we are. The current Equality Act includes a number of exceptions where there are particular needs for additional privacy. Um, there's, there's a definition in terms of achieving a uh, proportionate means of achieving legitimate aim where trans people can be excluded. We will no doubt have all seen the debate in sport uh, where it is possible in elite competitive sport for it to be lawful to exclude trans men from female events. And the current legislation has those nuances and allows those nuances. What's being proposed is a complete sledgehammer that would force people into inappropriate spaces. I mean, my is this about uh, single sex spaces? Is this what this boils down to? Um, explain to our viewers why, again, the, the, the law as it is currently drafted in the way Robin has explained doesn't account uh, and doesn't protect women in the way you want to see it. I mean, the clarification seems to lead to blocking out and preventing trans people in many instances, rather than just clarifying the protection that already exists for biological women. This is a very limited change. So Robin says it's a sledgehammer. It's not at all. It won't affect Robin at all because Robin does not have a gender recognition certificate. Only around 5,000 people in the country have a gender recognition certificate. So most people who are trans are legally the sex that they were registered at birth because they haven't gone through the process of uh, applying for a gender recognition certificate. Only 5,000 people have. Uh, and this is simply saying that those 5,000 people, for the purposes of the, of the Equality Act, remain their biological sex and are protected against sex discrimination in their biological sex as trans men, so female people who identify as men, may yes. still get pregnant. They need to be protected against sex discrimination. And so it says that there won't be two tiers of, of protection for trans people, all trans people are protected by the protected characteristic of gender reassignment, but it doesn't change their sex. And so organisations where they set clear policies that are based on sex, they can be confident that that's lawful oh. and that they're not going to be uh, sued. Yeah, and I mean, then, isn't that, that's an important point, isn't it, Robin? I mean, it is also about protecting what organisations decide to do. I mean, is it, what do you fear so much by the proposed change, Robin? Is it that you don't actually trust perhaps the motivation, um, not, not of my particularly, but of the changes that may be made by the government, um, that you are so clear that it will be disastrous for trans people. I have no doubt about the genuineness of, of Meyer's beliefs and Meyer's motivations. I'm a practical lawyer. It's the practical effect. Mm. I was in the Palace of Westminster last week and asked to use the lavatory on my way to a committee room and was shown to the female lavatories. I mean, for the last, since I transitioned 13 years ago, those are the facilities I've used, have been accepted to use, causes no difficulty that I'm, I'm using. And if this proposed change was made, then I would be forced to use male lavatories. How there are unisex lavatories in Parliament. I, I have no desire to, use a unit to be, well, be ghettoised into unisex over... facilities. That's, Muslim that's not women transition. cannot use the toilet that is shared with men. Your desires are not the only desires that need to be accommodated in public life. Well, Robin? I'm sorry to say, that's not the response that I get from the many women I work with, um, that I uh, use services with. 
uh, early in my transition, I joined the gym club and the gym, uh, the person who was running the club asked the group of women, explained my circumstances, I asked her to, my circumstances were explained to the other people using the club, about 20 women, and she assured me that not a single woman objected to my using those facilities. So All right. I appreciate and there is a small number of people who have a difficulty and quite a we large need to work out how to accommodate like them. All right, Robin and Mike, just, 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 just hold on for a, a second because I'm going to ask the legislators here. Um, should the law be changed? You've heard uh, both <clears throat> opinions uh, across the divide representing those two petitions. And Kemi Badenot, the Women and Equalities Secretary, uh, has written to the Equalities Watchdog asking for advice on how sex should be defined in law. Should it be changed? Well, if we're going to fiddle about with the Equalities Act and cause a practical problem for most of the trans population and quite a serious practical problem about actually getting out because if you can't use facilities or are not willing to use facilities uh, that you don't feel uh, comfortable in and don't look as though you ought to be in um well that carries serious implications for how people are going to carry on their lives and we need to remember that quite a lot of there are quite a lot of trans people they're just hidden they they, they don't uh people have perhaps different identities at work um uh and, and in their private life. So we just need to be very careful about making changes about the implications. That's why I would tend to agree with Robin on, uh, uh, on this. On Siobhan, what do you uh, think? Uh, should the, should well, the law... Well, because the Equality Act sits alongside the Gender Recognition Act, and we ducked making changes to gender. Yes. Recognition. Having gone through an enormous consultation process, mm. a massive amount well, of... Well, that was the Conservatives. And the, and, the point, and the point being that uh, when Maya says there are only 5,000 gender recognition certificates, that is an example of the failure of the process because it's so difficult to get a gender recognition certificate and so most people right. don't take go down. Well, Siobhan, what's your view? Because the Labour Party has also struggled uh, with this issue in terms of clarity. Listening to what Maya has said, do you agree with her that there needs to be this extra protection or this clarity, as she calls it, uh, in terms of the uh, Equalities Act? My understanding there is a need for clarity because of a High Court decision in Scotland uh, which looked at whether or not uh, gender reassignment trumped uh, sex at birth. Um, I agree with Maya. I think the act should be changed. Um, I think I, my understanding of it is there's three provisions in the eight character characteristics protected in the act which again is a, was the act was a great triumph for harriet harman who we were speaking about earlier uh, and they include sex gender reassignment and sexual orientation um, and there are a small number of services uh, prisons as we've seen from scotland nhs services social care services where women who say they want to be treated by women or who need that security it's women who are in the main uh, uh victims of violence um that 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 these protections should really exist all right very briefly robin and maya just a final thought uh, responding to the mps robin first there really isn't any evidence that there's a problem in the nhs uh, a, a trans organization made a freedom of information act request of all the nhs trusts across the country and there wasn't a problem. All right. And Maya, finally a thought, responding to what Chris had said? We, we hear every day from women who are self-excluding from services and who are being bullied and harassed because they say they simply want to be treated by women or to have a single-sex service. The Equality Act is meant to protect everyone in the country and this clarity would allow, allow it to do that. All right. Maya Forstatter um, and Robin Mora-White, thank you both very much uh, for joining us and thank you, of course, to all of my guests today. Uh, a big week ahead at Westminster. I'll be back tomorrow with more politics.